Well, just like last year, I waited until the very last minute to do my Halloween project, but I got it done, so I wanted to show you guys what I made. So last year I made this 3D printed motion activated pumpkin that would hiss at people as they walked by. So if you want to see that, then I'll link to it up here at the top. I had wanted to use individual tiny screens for the eyes along with some Arduino code from Adafruit to do that. I didn't have all the parts that I needed, so I wound up just using one big screen that I had on hand. But I still wanted to make something based off the Uncanny Eyes project from Adafruit, and here's what I came up with. It's sort of like a strand of Christmas lights, but instead of lights, there are several sets of eyes being controlled by Arduino boards that look around and blink. So you can stick them in the bushes or a window and creep out the neighborhood kids while they're trick-or-treating. I'm really happy with how it turned out, so if you want to see how I made it, keep watching. So here are the parts that I used. First, I've got one of Adafruit's M0 based Arduinos. This is from their Itsy Bitsy line. Uh, the M4 version will work as well, and so will the Teensy 3.1 and 3.2. But those are all more expensive anyway, so this is a better option. You'll need one of these for every four screens that you want to use, meaning every two sets of eyes. And then I've got a 1.44 inch SPI based screen. You can get these for a few bucks a piece from China on eBay or AliExpress. Or if you need them sooner, you can pay a little extra and get them from a US based seller on eBay. I had a bunch of these screens on hand from earlier this year when I did my VMU project. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this project was to put those to use. We'll also need 68 ohm resistors that we're gonna use to make it so that the LED backlight on the screens can work off of five volts. More on that in a minute. An ethernet cable, just about any one will do, although obviously you'll want one longer than this one. And then a 3D printed enclosure for each of the screens and Arduino boards. So if you wanna print some of these out yourself, I'll put the STL file for this on Thingiverse. And as usual, I'll have links to all the parts that I used as well as the code that I used in the description. So first I modified the code from Adafruit to make it so that each eye could move and blink independently. I quickly found that the frame rate would drop drastically after you added more than two or three screens. Plus there are only enough wires in an ethernet cable to connect two screens to one board at a time anyway. So I kind of cheated so the board only thinks that it's driving two screens, but each set of eyes is connected to the same pins. So they're looking in the same direction and blinking at the same time. Frame rate's a lot higher than it was when I had three or four screens connected at once. So that way we can have one board controlling four screens at once as two sets of eyes that are looking around and blinking at the same time. So on the back of the screen, each pin is labeled and here's where each one connects to the board. CS1 and CS2 are the chip select pins. That's what the Arduino uses to tell each SPI device that is connected to it who it's talking to at any given time. The USB pin is connected to the power pin on the micro USB port. So that's five volts and that'll connect to the VCC pin on the screen. The LED pin needs power too, but it's expecting 3.3 volts. So we'll need to swap out this resistor for a higher value one so that it can run off of five volts as well. That's where those 68 ohm resistors that I mentioned in the beginning come in. So if you look in an ethernet cable, you'll see eight wires with four colors, half solid and half with a stripe. So here's how I'm using each of those colors and the colors written with the line above them represent the striped wires. To get the screen ready, you'll want to remove the pins. Easiest way to do that is to snip the plastic between each pin, heat up the solder on the other side and pull them each out. To remove the old resistor, just add some more solder to each side so you can heat them both up at the same time and sort of sweep it off like this. Then you can put the new resistor on. Orientation doesn't matter for this. Now when you're attaching wires to the Arduino, you'll need to connect multiple wires to each of the pinholes, which can be kind of tricky. So if you're having a hard time doing that, an easier way to do that is to put one wire into the pinhole and then connect the other wire onto the bottom side of the board. Now the reason we're attaching two sets of wires to each pinhole is so that we can connect the screen that will go in this first box with the Arduino board and then run the rest of the wires to the next box to drive the next screen. And that one will do the same thing and pass it on to the next screen until we've got two sets of eyes for that board. You'll also wanna run a short wire from the VCC pin on the screen to the LED pin so that that can be powered as well. And you'll notice that I didn't have to connect two wires to the second chip select pin since we're not using that one yet. Right now we're just wiring up the first set of eyes. To power the whole strip, starting with this first Arduino board, I snipped the end off of a micro USB cable and used that. My setup with 10 screens and three Arduinos draws about 350 milliamps, so this should work just fine for quite a few sets of screens and boards. Here's the 3D printed part that I designed for this. The two halves snap together, and this snap fit technique is something that I learned from Noe Ruiz over at Adafruit. 
He's got a bunch of Fusion 360 tutorial videos on YouTube, so if you're just getting into that or you want to learn some new tricks, I definitely recommend checking them out. The bottom part of the Arduino slots in here at the bottom, and then the top part of it snaps underneath these two arms here towards the top. These two sort of channels on either side are for a zip tie to slide through so that you can tighten that around the cables to hold them in place. And then these hollow parts on the back side are for the heads of those zip ties so that it can snap together. I borrowed this genius idea from the Prusa i3. Uh, they use the same technique in their printed parts. To put it in the 3D printed case, the screen just snaps into the front and use zip ties to hold the cables in place. Then just put the Arduino in and snap the two halves together. Now for the second screen in the chain, I cut the cable and reconnected each wire with another wire spliced in. I didn't have to do that with the chip select wire though, since we're on the second screen that's still using the first chip select signal. We just needed to make sure that it's passed on to the next set of eyes. Same process for putting together the second set of eyes, except that you'll be using that second chip select wire. And one of the things that I like about this project is how scalable it is. So if you don't want to spend very much money, you could just use one board and four screens and still have something pretty cool to stick in the bushes or to decorate your house with. Now, if you're adding another Arduino to add more sets of eyes down the line, you can just use those two orange wires as the power input for that next Arduino board and start all over. Now, one thing that I want to point out, these things are by no means in any way weatherproof or waterproof. So definitely don't put these outside if it's going to be raining. Uh, don't leave them out overnight, that kind of thing. But with that said, with as little power as these things draw, you can put them just about anywhere by powering them off of a USB power bank and it'll run for hours and hours and hours off of it. All right, guys, well, I think that about covers it. If you're planning on making this or something else for Halloween, uh, let me know in the comments below, or better yet, stop by our forums or our Discord server and show us what you're making. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.